The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. Doesn't matter where you're at. Could be in Tombuctu or Pierre, uh, Peoria. Could be up uh, selling ice to Eskimos. Doesn't matter as long as you're here at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So we've got a market that's... Uh, down on extremely light volume. One of the reasons why I brought up uh, the subject of light volume into a three-day weekend with uh, Tim Ord yesterday is for this reason right now. We're going to be very short on a lot of stocks and a lot of indexes, too. Does that mean we go blow out the highs? No, but options have pretty much uh, suggested that we're going to be around 4700 for uh, the expiration. And, you know, there's a little bit going on here now of just people being nervous. But um, I don't think we're going to blow out the lows with volume. Uh, maybe some news uh, or surprise comes over the weekend. But right now, I think we are set up for something like a uh, 47, uh, 147, 25 area uh, close next week, a uh, week from today. And it's, uh, I think a lot of today, earlier this morning, was uh, more sector rotation. Uh, we saw the uh, banks come out before earnings, I mean, before the uh, uh, open this morning. Uh, Citibank is uh, down, what, uh, just a little less than 2%. Wells Fargo's up 3%. BlackRock's down 3%. JP Morgan, the big loser of earnings for the day, so I'll give them the horn. Other losers of the day, and that is uh, Disney. It's off 3% uh, on upgrades and downgrades, but uh, they're believing the downgrades. But uh, pretty much saying what I said about Netflix and and uh, the rest, and that is that these companies that depend on streaming are going to be spending a great deal more as the, the bid for talent and uh, scripts uh, continues to rise. And even this, the ability to find a uh, soundstage becomes problematic in the tinsel town. But uh, I do digress. Uh, anyway, other things going on. Uh, Dollar General down about 3.6%. But uh, that's kind of it. The rest of it's all about uh, a lot, I think, a lot of smoke and mirrors and noise. Um, one of the things probably most interesting to people is the argument on how banks could be lower with interest rates going higher. Uh, a lot of people, especially older, more experienced traders, have kind of an idea that uh, the Fed is once again uh, flapping its gums and it really won't do much of anything this year. They're saying one or maybe two uh, rate hikes and a half percent probably not going to be enough uh, to really get uh, JPM up to its level. Now, they came out rather sour uh, in what they were saying. Um, and my experience with J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs is they are only sour right before they grant themselves huge stock options. I'm they tend to be very bullish at highs and tend to be very bearish when things are going lower. Uh, but uh, that's kind of it. Question. We got some emails already. Uh, first in the day is, uh, Pete, and, uh, it's not a repeat from Pete. It is a new question. Uh, do you think the TLT will fall below 141? I said, yes. Uh, as I said, I thought maybe we'd be into 139 by now. Uh, the Fed did come out early in the week and throw some money at the market. 
even though they're saying that they won't be throwing any more money. Uh, they did a little bit, kind of stem the flow. And really, when it comes down to it, uh, historically, over the last 100 years, the Fed's real job has been to slow down when the bubbles uh, burst, because I haven't ever seen them actually do anything to uh, slow down a bubble before it gets to some level where it's going to burst. They always come in on the backside and act surprised. Uh, but, yeah, I think uh, 139, 138-ish. But uh, my guess is there are a few things that are going to happen. Um, the person that I believe the most on predicting uh, COVID trends is saying that they think that we'll be out of this uh, and back to kind of early fall levels by mid-February or even maybe earlier. Uh, they think that this will be a huge blip and uh, then uh, very quiet and maybe even a burnout uh, before uh, June this year. They've been pretty good uh, when I've been reading this uh, gentleman's prediction. He does a lot of in-depth uh, technical analysis of what's going on and uh, not a lot of flowery uh, political spin on it. I think that a lot of people uh, in... Uh, on Wall Street are out predicting the absolute worst. And that's generally when I listen to them the least because generally they've already gone short and they're talking their own book for the most part. But um, is it going to be more sector, sector rotation? Yes. And you got to sell the stock that probably not doing exactly what you thought it would, uh, i.e. the banks. They'll sell those and they'll go back and buy something else. And, you know, why uh, they can put their money in most things, my guess is they're going to put stuff right back in the stuff that makes the index pop the most. So, you know, as I said, uh, maybe even a week or two weeks ago, uh, I think it was probably maybe at least a week ago, I said, I don't think this market is going to fall, the wheels are going to fall off the wagon uh, during or before options expiration. I bet when I look at the data tonight or over the weekend, we're going to find out that these guys were selling puts left and right, um, trying to get everybody all bearish before expiration next week and bring it back up to 4,700 and rake in the dough once again. Now, after that, could we have a few weeks of uh, bigger downtrends? We could, but I think a lot of it depends on what happens next week. If we get any surprises, I just don't see a lot. I see inflation continuing. I see a uh, current administration uh, that is a theocracy against uh, fossil fuels. That theocracy is going to mean that we're only going to continue to have higher fuel prices. And they literally light the fire of inflation like they did in 1974 with the embargo. It is a tax on literally everything and a devastating tax at that. We will return just like MacArthur did to the Philippines after this. Are you grinding in the market but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. As we get back to it, uh, yeah, I don't see a whole lot going on here. Uh, the market's certainly not reacting in a way that would say interest rates are going through the roof and the banks are going higher. Of course, uh, Tuesday we have uh, Goldman Sachs, J.B. Hunt, Interactive Brokers, so we'll get a lot of taste of that, what they predict. Generally, uh, the uh, CEO at Interactive Brokers is pretty good on giving some color and not a lot of uh, weird smack. Uh, Wednesday, Bank of America, ASML. Now, ASML, we've talked about them a bit. Of course, they're having kind of some issues where China wants to buy a ton of equipment from them. I'm talking about maybe three, four, five billion dollars worth of equipment from them. Uh, the West is trying to block um, those exports so that uh, China can't try to uh, corner the market on chips. Um, eh. So they're looking at that. Morgan Stanley, Procter & Gamble, Foss & All, United Airlines, AA. Uh, what else do we have? Thursday, AAL. Uh, what is that? Uh, Broker, Broker, BKR. Netflix, Intuitive Surgical, CSX, uh, PPG, Friday of next week uh, on expiration day. We've got SLB and Ally. So we're going to get a taste of earnings. I think everybody's a little nervous after this morning. But like I said, I I pretty much do the opposite of whatever Goldman Sachs or uh, Morgan Stanley or the rest of uh, uh, the cabal tells me to do. And generally, it's the right thing to do. So if they're telling me to get worried about it, I think they're probably a little bit early. They may want to uh, run all their shares, get... Uh, uh, stock at cheaper prices for uh, uh, their uh, stock awards, other things like that. Yeah. Uh, you're swimming with the sharks if you're listening to them. And as I've always said, uh, listening to the big men of Wall Street, mostly those at Goldman Sachs or Morgan Stanley, is, liking, uh, is uh, like using your wife's uh, boyfriend attorney for your divorce. Probably not a very smart idea. Okay. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Jimmy. Uh, there's something more to it. I'll 
talk to you about during the break. Okay. Um, let's see what else we have here. Got some more emails. Um, but that's kind of it. We're going to have a big week next week. I think that at least the downside Goldman Sachs uh, BAC is probably priced in a, a big deal. And two, we don't know that they're going to be as dour and sour uh, as the, uh, the the folks today at J.P. Morgan were. Uh, but generally, if you get everybody bearish before the, the uh, fact, generally everybody's short and it either doesn't go down at all or doesn't move or goes higher on a short squeeze if they come out with something a little bit better. And I always figured these guys are, are back in a back room talking uh, in a uh, smoke-filled room with big cigars talking about how they can liberate uh, us retail traders from some of our cash. But uh, like I said, I'm not a big fan of playing them for earnings, and I'm even a less of a fan of listening them, uh, on what's going to happen in the market because uh, eh, I don't think they've ever been right. But uh, I think they just go out there to say something, give CNBC something uh, for the air. But uh, it's generally not profitable. 877-927-6648. Let's do a little history and move on. Yeah, it's history. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. It is history, and on this day in 2000, Microsoft Chairman Bill Gates steps aside as chief executive and promotes, uh, promotes the uh, company President Steve Ballmer to the position. Of course, he knew that he couldn't do anything, and the government was leaning heavy on him. I suspect this is uh, what they call a prologue. What is it? Past is prologue. Uh, and uh, we're going to see the same thing. In some of the other uh, e uh, CEOs this year that probably couldn't be blown out of their company with uh, dynamite uh, because they've got uh, well, the, the agreements when they went to, uh, when they went IPO, but it will be so distasteful that they'll do something kind of like this. Gates would stay on as chief sar uh, software architect, which is kind of interesting because he was fairly good. Uh, what he did, but most people don't know the last bit of code he wrote was 1979. I mean, he's got a kind of a good idea, not that he was a bad manager. In fact, he had a really good idea of how to wage war in Silicon Valley battles. Uh, it was, uh, but mostly he hung around to make sure that uh, the shares that he started selling literally in 2001 took him to 20, what, 18, I think, until he was done. But he wanted to make sure that uh, nothing went uh, awry as he was cashing out. My guess is that uh, other folks like Zuckerberg are buying uh, the rest of uh, Hawaiian islands that they mostly already own are also thinking about uh, greener pastures and not having to ask fool questions on why they violated the law repeatedly and lied to Congress. But... I do digress on this day in 2000. Okay. Um, anyway, that's uh, that. Let's get back to stuff already in progress over most of TFNN. Uh, let's take a quick look at some of these movers and shakers today. Uh, if you forgot, because it's easy to do, we are closed on Monday. Um, brought up uh, this morning uh, that you needed to watch out about the uh, about the decay uh, in options because they'll they're basically going to take out three days. Generally, they take out the first two days early on Fridays, a three day weekend, and then uh, they will go to um, the end of the day where they'll pull out Mondays, generally in the last hour. So if you've got uh, any kind of options, um, just know that you're probably going to see, if they've got a lot of premium, they're probably going to see a little bit of melt before the end of the day. Um, that's also with how the market closes. Um, we've been kind of playing around with uh, unchanged 
uh, on the NASDAQ. It's down 22 at the moment, down 21 on the S&P. Like I said, though, the volume uh, just quite isn't there to drive the market down today. Uh, as we uh, get to the uh, bottom of the first uh, uh, of the uh, hour, we're doing about 6.9 million shares and probably needed somewhere in the neighborhood of 14 to 16 million to really uh, make me believe that we we're blowing everything up. Now, as I said before, doesn't mean that we can't go down, but I do think they're going to have at least one more rally. They be thin. I think they got everybody all hot and bothered and short this week. Going to run them next week. If we're really looking for some destruction, I think it's in the last week of this month. We'll be back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Putting in. And uh, the first one is from Todd. And he wants to look at the leaders of the tech space. Um, certainly advanced micro uh, did open down, but it's back into the trading range. Volume, again, fairly light uh, doing uh, to, to what is it? Uh, is it L? Oh, I think it's L. Q? No, it's not Q. 
There we go. Uh, it is 55 million shares compared to 76 million shares. Uh, but uh, really what we're looking at is the 84 million shares uh, of the 125 low. Uh, that was probably a pretty good indication that we were going to come back and retest that low. But you know what? I think uh, cooler heads are going to prevail. We're probably, at least for the next week, going to hold out above 130 on AMD. Things still look okay. I'm just not expecting a lot to the upside. And NVIDIA, when we're looking at the, the big shakers out here, uh, down a little bit more. It's got a higher PE, and people are selling it just on that basis. But again, you're in a 60 million share low from January 10th. Uh, into uh, uh, the 14th, which is today, with 30 million shares. So you're basically doing half volume of this big push down. And again, probably not something I'm going to jump on, but if we're probably expecting this to blow out, not going to happen. AMD and NVIDIA, some of the highest shorted stocks on a daily basis. So generally, they tend to be shorted early in the morning and covered in the afternoon after they run all the shorts that decided that it was today that was going to be the day that it all blew up. But uh, now, I mean, this kind of looks like the rest of the market. There isn't a whole lot of upside in the indexes, but it's not going to take much, I think, to get us to, to uh, uh, 4,700 for next Friday. Now, I haven't seen the uh, close on options today, but I can get the general feel that everybody started buying puts, and that's a good sign, or many people, or most people started buying puts, and that's probably a good sign of a temporary low. As I said, I think uh, the way that the can uh, the uh, calendar works out this uh, uh, month, you've got the 24th through the 28th, no fun buying, nothing like that. And if you're going to see some fairly ma uh, major weakness, I don't think it's going to be Next week, I think it's you're probably going to see, like I said, that 47 low 4700 area on the S&P. We'll talk about that when we return on Tuesday. But I just don't I think it's going to burn out here generally, especially off the top. If you're going to have a, a horrible year, it generally takes a little bit of time to get going. The, the attitude does not turn around overnight for traders. Uh, why they may be scared uh, and a little bit trep uh, uh, being a little bit trepid trepidatious. Is that a word? I think it is. Um, you can get it. Now, The neck. if we go up, very light volume, the next move down will probably blow all those out. But uh, we shall see. We, I think we can get a week of uh, just trying to make uh, highs in that 4,700 area and then turn sideways. Uh, trepidatious. Yes, I think I thought it was a word, but it's not a word you use every day. I have to reach down for some of those, although. Okay, another intrepid listener, uh, Mimi, wants to look at energy, C O F. Um, you pulled back after this gap. Um, you had a big gap down, and that was on the uh, 27th of uh, October. You did that with 7.3 million shares. Uh, into it with uh, 2.4 million shares. I think you're just consolidating out here. Uh, it's going to take a few more times, so like breaking down uh, the market. It's going to take a little bit to break back up. It's very tough for me to see uh, a theocracy in this in this uh, administration on energy that doesn't mean that the energy prices are going up and generally um, I'm talking about something else here at the moment but uh, on Capital One excuse me I was thinking about energy for some reason stuck in my head um, anyway uh, on this one you've got it but yeah I think I, I don't know what your position is I don't th know what you're looking at but I would hold into Tuesday see what happens. I don't see a whole lot here. Got a little bit of reversal. Um, if you were long this thing, you bought it at the bottom, back here on 
December 20th. That's all I would have ever looked for in the trade, and I would have been out yesterday when it filled half that gap. But if you listen to me long enough, that's pretty much it. That is half uh, the existing gap. It gets filled. I'm out. That is probably the best um, uh, advice you can give somebody if it comes up and is tested by lighter volume. Because it's not that they don't go up on lighter volume. It's generally on lighter volume. They just don't stick. So, yeah, could you hang on till Monday? Yeah, but, I, you know, generally, if it's a trade, if you've owned this thing for two years or something, it's different. But if you're in for a trade, you're out at this middle part of that gap. Okay, other things going on here. She wants to look at EFR, ERF, excuse me. Dyslexia Cure 4 found. Okay. Um, well, you broke above. You really didn't do it with volume. This is just kind of volume up here. Yeah, let's look at longer, this thing longer. Again, I don't know where you are at in this, Mimi, if you're in it at all. Uh, my thought would be that this is going to come back and retest about $10.85. Uh, you've got that gap up, or gap down, excuse me, on the 5th. You kind of come up here, you never really had a lot more volume. Uh, 1080, yeah, 1085-ish uh, is where this could pull back to. I don't see a lot of reason. Maybe there's something else going on. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Back to our list of stuff. You can give me a call, 877-927-6648. Uh, Dan the Den brings up uh, XBI. Let's take a look at that and see what he's looking at. Well, you're back at the gap. That gap goes back to... Two, is that right? Which is that the one? That one right there. Okay. Goes back to May 5th of 2020. Uh, 7 million shares. You get a little more than you'd like, 11.6. Uh, fairly narrow gap. There's a very big double gap right there. At uh, about, uh, what, 87 to 89? I would watch out for that. That's the biotech ETF. We'll be back in a minute. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Mimi did want to look at uh, Conical Phillips. I was not losing my mind. I just didn't look back close enough. And uh, it's uh, above. Like I said, though, I mean, you've got the wind at your back with the administration. It's very tough to see uh, that fuel prices come down significantly. But as long as you're above the three by three, uh, you are you know, on the green. I, I don't know where you're at. Again, you didn't say, but uh, if you're long this thing, there's no reason to sell it. Um, on weekends, uh, even more than gold, it's where people uh, want to park their cash. And, of course, uh, even with more um, uh, energy um, and what I saw today from the uh, Baker Hughes numbers, uh it, most of those oil wells are not the big producing ones. A lot of ones uh, came on from Baker Hughes numbers uh, today from Canada, but they're all fairly small producers. I think there was only uh, of the 15 in the states that went back online, I think only one of them was a big producer or two. So it's not, you know, there's a lot of oil wells, but uh you know, they're, they are differently. Generally, the ones when you see offshore oil wells, rigs, numbers, and that Baker Hughes numbers, you know that thing costs billions and billions. And that thing is going to have to crank out lots of oil to be worth it. So when those come back on, I always put a little bit more of a note there. Let's go to Scott in Denver. He's a mile high. How you doing, uh, Scott? Great, Dave. How are you today? Another day in paradise. <laughs> right on. Hey, I actually have a follow-up question on, uh, well, I, I was curious about applied materials, but also I had a follow-up question with, you talked about uh, NVIDIA and AMD earlier. Mm -hmm. I was just curious, you know, you talk about those being shorted and their high PE stocks. Do you think um, those things are in danger of truly taken a big nosedive? Well, generally with higher interest rates, the thought is that you look for lower PEs. You look for stocks with cash flow. You look for a lot of defensive ways to play the market. And everybody's always looking for a faster horse. These things have had a long run. But to me, I don't know how, you know, even if they're expensive, I don't, if this is not both companies could sell four times what they what they're selling today if they could produce it. So I'm not a big fan of, of going short those kind of stocks because all they have to do is find out that suddenly they've got another 20 percent video card business. Those things are selling for a grand, two grand a piece. It doesn't take long to do a lot of business. Uh, NVIDIA has a huge business now in the uh, in the part of uh, big uh, 
big iron, as they used to say, IBM space with uh, its big systems for uh, uh, machine learning. And so I, it's, you know, if you can't sell your products uh, because uh, people don't want them, that's one thing. But if you've got four times as many people, uh, I went down to Best Buy um, during my vacation because they had a handful of the cards. There were 120 of us standing in line for eight cards. That gives you how <laughs> how bad the video card business is for NVIDIA, right? The reason I stood in line hoping to get through there is because I wanted to pay the $800 for the card, not the sixteen hundred or two grand that the scalpers are charging for them. So, uh, a uh, AMAT continues to wipe the floor with Intel, at least on the consumer side of video chip or um, on uh, processor chips. These are not companies that are doing badly. If the market pulls back, they'll pull back too. But do I think they're going to blow up? Generally, what happens is that. It's just like getting a, in a traffic jam, right? You get in the traffic jam, then it starts moving a little faster. It starts moving a little faster. And then what happens is all the semiconductors have far more um, uh, ability to manufacture than customers. And prices plummet, and that's when the semis fall apart. I don't yeah. see that happening right now. Now, for applied materials... I think that they're the best play because you already know that Taiwan Semiconductor is going to spend $40 billion in the next year building new facilities. And that money's got to come to applied materials because about 30 or 35 percent of all that stuff comes from applied materials. They are the man when it comes to supplying TSM. So uh, ASML, applied material, those are all the big ones. The big thing for ASML is it's kind of in a sell mode because uh, uh, we're at least the U.S. and others on the West are trying to make sure that ASML does not sell those uh, machines to China and let them kind of corner the market. So a good kind of a good overview. Yeah, it really is. And, th- you know, now you got me thinking if AMAT applied materials – PE is anywhere like uh, NVIDIA and uh, AMD. I don't know if you know offhand. I do not know, but it's easy enough to uh, look up. Google is your friend. So we'll see. uh, Okay, here, actually I see it. $24.50 for AMAT, and then NVIDIA is $82, and AMD is $41. Yeah, that's about what it should be. Literally, um, a, uh, NVIDIA has made a new business uh, at the high end of high end uh, uh, computing, and it's selling the stuff, everything that they can build. And I don't see that changing for two years. Um, so, you know, it doesn't matter what happens, machine learning's here and it's here to stay. And they all need GPU um, processors, or as they call it in the business, TPUs, tensor processing units. You know what a tensor is? Nope. Well, you saw the movie The Matrix, right? Yep. Okay. Well, if you go one more level uh, deep from a matrix, you go to a tensor. So um, you go from arrays to matrices, so now you've got an X and a Y, and then you go deep. And when you go deep, that's a tensor. But the, the big thing that uh, all the, the uh, machine learning's built on is being able to add and subtract fairly, uh, I'm going to call it uh, handheld calculator uh, level technology, extremely fast, but all of them in parallel. So it's like having it's like having 10 million people out there, and each one of them gets another piece of the puzzle, and they just have to uh, run the calculations on that piece. But uh, no, it's hard to see applied materials not doing well over the next year, as long as TSM uh, lets that money flow. 
So it's the better bet of the bunch. Hey, can I ask you one more question when we get back? Yeah, we'll be back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN. Also, a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Uh, got about two minutes. Uh, go right ahead. So I was curious. <clears throat> you said a applied material AMAT is the best of the bunch. Um, if I'm I just was saying looking it, to it, it, potentially, I'm, I'm saying it's the best trade because you know the that trade. they're going to be getting that money, right? I'm sorry. Say again. You know they're going to be getting that money, so that's why I said they're the best trade. You may make money more okay. or less than something else, but you know the sure thing's always the best, right? Right. Okay. And so, with with the Nasdaq coming down because of the interest rates, would you suggest holding off before putting on a longer, what I think could be a longer term trade in applied materials, or just scaling in now at all time highs? I'm not a big fan of chasing, so I always wait for a retrace. You always get one. And maybe it goes a little higher, then comes back. Um, 145, 147, and this would probably be very good support. Wonderful. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Dave. You bet. Have a good weekend. As all you do, we're down uh, 17. 
On the S&P 500, Dow's uh, down 321, the NASDAQ's off six. So that's, oh, yeah, we're done with him. Thanks for the call. Uh, so uh, that's kind of it. We're looking at the weekend. Uh, we're going to check the volume here just before we go. We've got about 7.5 billion shares. As I said, probably if we're going to blow out the bottom, we're going to need something like 14 uh, billion on the CBOE consolidated tape. So I'm going to say we come in with uh, 10 by the end of the day, maybe. Uh, so it's still going to be light. Um, if we're going to bounce, we're probably going to bounce. And then maybe the next time down we can get through. But I think that's going to be after next Friday's monthly options expiration. Sell when you can, not when you have to. And we'll see you here Tuesday, since everybody's closed on Monday. <laughs>